Good morning. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a long time. In case you didn't notice, I've been gone for the last two Sundays. We were on Christmas vacation, as many of you were. And then last week, we were at a retreat with the teenagers. Tyler and all the parents who were there did a great job of putting that on. I do have to confess something. I played soccer at the winter retreat. I, I know that's terrible. I know it's terrible. All these years that I have ragged on soccer, but uh, we had an event where we played soccer, and if I look like I'm limping a little bit, I'm protecting an ankle that I somehow injured playing soccer. I think that was retribution. God was getting me back for all those times that I have disdained soccer. Well, I'm so glad to see everybody today. It's a new year. It's going to be a great year. I appreciate everybody being here today. This is the, uh, you know, one of the first Sundays of the new year. The Bible calls Sunday the Lord's Day. It's not my day to do what I want. It's the Lord's day. And so I appreciate you being here and making this a priority to honor God at the very be the very least that we can do for God because of all that Jesus has done for us is to sing praises to him and to study his word and to try at a service like this try to uh, understand his will better for our lives and live it out. That's the best that we can do. When we talk about a new year you know, I, I read some things that I thought were pretty good and pretty funny this week. It says, here's one guy at the beginning of a new year, is what he said. He said, Dear Lord, so far this year I've done well. I haven't gossiped. I haven't lost my temper. I haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm very thankful for that. But in a few minutes, Lord, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot more help. And I think all of us could probably say that. Listen to these uh, dieting New Year's resolutions that one person had starting in the year 2010. This is 2010. This person's New Year's resolution said, I'll get my weight down below 160 pounds. The next year when 2011 rolled around, they said, I will follow my new diet religiously until I get below 180 pounds. In 2012... I will develop a realistic attitude about my weight. In 2013, I will work out every day. 2014, I'll try to drive past a gym at least once a week and eat fewer cookies. And I'm sure probably a lot of us can identify with that. You know, in order for this year to be different, we can't just make resolutions. We have to implement them. That means me. That means you. As we talk about a theme for every year, Jim mentioned this in passing in his presentation just a second ago. As we think about a theme, every year about uh, somewhere in October as the new year is approaching, I start thinking about, okay, what do we really need to focus on this year? And here's what I think about this church. I think it's important for you to know what your preacher thinks about this church. Here's what I think about this church. And by church, I mean people. I think this is a good church. As I said Wednesday night, if you were here, you know, in the book of Revelation, God writes letters to these seven churches, real churches like ours. And to one of those churches, he has only glowing good things to say. To another church, he doesn't have anything good to say. To five of them, he says, you're doing this really well. But here's some things you really need to get on board with, some things that you really need to change. I think we would be in that category. I don't think there is nothing good that God would have to say about us. There's a lot of good things about this church. This church does a better job at some things than any church I've ever seen before. When it comes time to help people and to give, to collect money and to collect items, to support people, to help people, this is the best church I've ever seen anywhere that does that. And that means you guys get on board and you help with people. And God bless you for doing that. But I do think there's some things we need to get on board with. And all of us need to get on board with it. And that means you. So as I preach this morning, I want everybody, hopefully, everybody will internalize this. How does this apply to me? So obviously, for all of us to be on board, that means if you're not on board, you have to get on board. And so we're going to talk about what some of these things are this year. I'm going to keep coming back to this throughout the year. What are some things that we need to get on board with? And Jim mentioned this in passing just a second ago. This is a graph 
When I first moved here in 2013, we had a retreat, the elders and I did, in early 2014, and we came up with a model, a graph, a representation visually to show what we're trying to do at this church. That's what this baseball diamond represents. This is what we are trying to do. In a nutshell, we're trying to do this. We're trying to get people to first base. We're trying to see people converted to Jesus Christ. That is one of our main missions. We want people to be converted to Jesus Christ, but we don't want them just to stay there. We want there to be movement towards an ultimate goal, and we want them to move to second base. That means to be connected. We want everybody not only to be converted, but to be connected to other people because that's how you grow. You know, there's a verse in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17 that says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We need other people to challenge us, don't we? We need other people to sharpen us, to make us less dull, to make us sharper for the Lord's work. And so we need to get connected, not only to other people, but we need to get connected to ministries. I want everybody here to ask yourself something as you look at that diagram. Where do you see yourself on that diagram? Have you gotten even to first base? Have you been converted to Jesus? Most of you in here have. If not, that's God's will for your life, and it's of the utmost importance eternally. But have you moved from then? Have you gotten connected to people? Have you gotten connected to ministries? Let me ask you this. Are you only on our church role, or are you playing a role? I'm glad you're on the church role. I'm glad you're members of this church. But a biblical member means you're not just on the role, it means you're playing a role. It means there is something, some job that you have that you are doing here to contribute to the good and the welfare of this church body. And then God wants us to move from there. He wants us to continue, to continue to grow and to develop and to mature in our life. This is basically on us as individuals. A church can't make you do that. This is something you need to do yourself. Now, we need to provide the avenues, I think, to help people do that. And we have a lot of avenues that we provide to help people grow and develop spiritually. It's our job to provide the avenues, but it's your job to walk on it, right? And so hopefully that is what you will do this year. And the ultimate goal for all of us is God wants us to be Christ-like. So in a nutshell, this is what we are trying to do here this year at Landmark. This is what God's will for us is, is for us to be people who are moving in our relationship with the Lord. Let me ask you, this past year, did you move in your relationship with the Lord? Did you grow? Did you develop toward this goal? If not, don't let that continue in this new year. Let there be movement, let there be change, let there be development in your life. What I'm going to focus on in this sermon, it's going to be an abbreviated sermon uh, because of the budget presentation, which is necessary every year, but I'm going to focus on two main areas where we need to grow and mature and develop and some things that we need to get on board with. There are some things wh that we're going to talk about collectively as a church that we need to do. And then I'm going to talk about some things as individuals that we need to do. I want to show you a couple of graphs from a bunch of research. Here's a graph that talks about church membership in the United States. This is not Churches of Christ. This is basically any kind of a uh, basically Protestant church. That's used in a big term, uh, which we would be included in that in a large sense anyway. Notice church membership among U.S. adults is now below 50%. Since in 1940, it was 73%. It's really started going down since about 2010. This is the first time in American history that less than half of the people in America, less than half of the adults in America even claim to belong to any kind of a Protestant church. That's disturbing to me. And I hope it's disturbing to you. And we need to do something about that. I can't control everybody else, but I can control me. Well, it's one thing to be a member, it's one thing to be on a roll, but God doesn't want us just to be on a roll, he wants us to play a role. Look at this next graph, this is about weekly church attendance for the years 1993 to 2020. And right now, it has significantly decreased since about right in here, only about 29% of adults who are even members of a church, only about 29% of them attend regularly. And so once again, here's what I want everybody to think about right now. What about you? You can't control everybody else, but you can control you. You're here this morning, 
And God bless you. We thank you for being here. Let this set a precedent for the rest of the year that I'm going to make it a goal. I'm going to make it something that is essential in my life. It is the epicenter of my life that I'm going to be a regular participating part of this church. I'm going to be here to honor God every first day of the week. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to earn my salvation. I'm doing it out of gratefulness to God for the fact that he has already given me my salvation. To kind of sum this up with a verse of scripture, I love this verse in Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25. He says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. And especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It is important, God says, he included this in his word, it's important for us to have times like this when we meet together. In fact, he says, don't neglect doing that. If that applies to you, hopefully you'll say, you know what, I'm going to make it a New Year's resolution this year. I'm going to not be as neglectful in gathering together with God's people as I have been in the past. God wants us to meet together. And when we meet together, he wants us to stir one another up and encourage one another. Sometimes we have a habit. We all do. We're all creatures of habit. We have a tendency to get in our own little circle of people that we always hang around with when there are other people that need encouragement that we could be stirring up and spurring on. I want to encourage everybody this year to do that. And the reason being a vibrant, participating, active part of a church is very, very important is because if we don't, we could end up looking like this. Some of you have been to Europe. Some of you have been to these great cathedrals. What these actually are in Paris and in London, these are church buildings. They're gigantic church buildings. At one time in the past, they were, these were the centers of lots of people who came to worship, the centers of vibrancy and a lot of activity going on and a lot of relevant things going on in the name of the Lord. You know what they are now primarily? Tourist attractions. There's not much church activity that is going on in these buildings anymore and throughout all of Europe it's pretty much just tourist attractions I don't want that to happen in the United States of America do you I do not want there to be a time in the future where people come to this building that is right in the middle of our town and it's a tourist attraction I want this church building to be full of people who are worshiping God and honoring God and reaching out to people with love and kindness and acts of mercy and with the truth of the gospel of Jesus. And I don't want that to regress. I want that to increase, don't you? And in order for that to happen, that takes me. And it takes you. And this is what God wants for all of us. But what about individually? We kind of talked about the church as a whole. What about individually? What do I need to do? And I means you. What do you personally need to do? Well, once again, here's a graph. How much of the Bible have you personally read? Well, this is roughly about 50% of the people have read either none of it. This is Americans, all, the whole populace. About half of our country has read none of it or very little. And the other half has read either all of it or at least half of it. That's about half. Okay, once again, I want to ask yourself, look at that graph. Where do you see yourself? There was a time in my life where I would have been, you know, basically none of it. There was a time when I would have been right here, none of it. But you can change that. If that's your case, God will forgive you if you'll repent and do better, right? He wants you. I don't want to get to heaven and have one of the writers of Scripture say, what would you think of my book? And me look there very sheepishly. Well, you know, I didn't read, didn't bother to read any of it. And so if there's need for improvement in your case, let that be a New Year's goal for you this year. Now, here's another graph. How often do you read the Bible? And notice this is among people who go to church this is among people like us. People who go to church, how often do you read the Bible? Well, this is roughly 60% right here. They read it quite a bit, either every day or a few times a week, 60%. But 40% of people who go to churches like this one read it very little. Let me ask you a question. Once again, where do you see yourself up there? 
What needs to change? I can tell you by personal experience, you will not grow spiritually. You will not be what God wants you to be if you don't get into the habit of reading God's Word on a regular basis every day. It will not happen. It cannot happen. And so if that is something that needs to change with you, if you want to know how to do that, how can I very simply have a, a daily Bible study time? Talk to me this week, and I'll share with you how you can do it. It's very, very easy, and I hope and pray that you will do that. I love this great verse in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Notice what it says about God's word. This book of the law will not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And he says, and then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Do you want to have success this new year? Most of us do. That's a New Year's resolution. I want to be prosperous. I want to be successful. He says, here's how you do it. Make sure that regularly, daily, this book of the law is not departing from your mouth, but you are meditating on it. Notice he says, day and night. That's something that you're doing regularly. Make that a part of your new year. When I boil all this down, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this. God wants the church, and he wants spiritual things to be an essential part of your life. Here's what I think is true. The reason people don't go to church regularly, the reason people don't read the Bible regularly, the reason people aren't involved in spiritual things regularly, things that happen at this church, for example, the reason they're not is because they don't see it as an essential part of their life. They don't see it as something that is in the middle, essentially, of everything else that is going on in their life. And so what I want to do this year here, the first sermon that I'm preaching this year, I want to simplify things for us. You'll notice around here it says multiply, edify, deepen, and simplify. I made an acronym for that, MEDS. We need to get on some MEDS if we're going to change things. And these are the MEDS we need to get on. I'm going to simplify this for you. Some things need to be made simple, don't they, in order for it to work. You know, when we were at the winter retreat last week, uh, I, I suggested to Tyler, how about we have the winter retreat in May from now on? Because uh, a cold front blew in when we were there, and it was real nice weather Friday, but then a cold front blew in, and it was winter-like out there, like it was here. It was cold. But we had this one activity where we were going to play a game. And the game involved, you throw they had this big ball, and you throw this big ball up, and Tyler calls out a number. Everybody had received a number. You're number 1, 2, 5, 10, 12, 20, up to 35, or however many people we had there. And it got to where somebody would throw the ball up and Tyler would call a number out or somebody would call a number out and everybody would stand there. Tyler would be like, who's number 12? Oh, oh I'm number 12. Okay, go get the ball. And then they would have to go get the ball and throw it at somebody. And then it would happen again. Tyler would go, who's number 22? And then finally he goes, wait, 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 wait. All you got to do is remember your number. It's supposed to be simple, right? Well, I think sometimes in church... We overcomplicate things. I'm going to try to make it simple. What does God want us to do as a church collectively and as individuals? I think he wants us to multiply. He wants us to expect some things. He wants us to deepen. And all that is meant to be simple. So I'm going to give you just a couple of things real specifically. Number one, each one win one. In order to reach the loss for Christ, we have to multiply. This is one of our main goals and that means each one. I think what, we ha what happens sometimes is we think, yes, I want to be of a part of a church that's growing. Yes, we want to see people brought to Jesus. But do you see yourself as part of that? I want everybody to think about this in this new year. When you go to work, when you go to school, in your neighborhood, wherever you are, whatever you are about doing, have on your mind, what can I do to be used for God as a vessel to reach lost people for Christ? Those people that you already know is who you need to focus on. If each one of us in this room would do that this year, each one win one. I'm going to focus on this one person I already know. I don't have to break the ice with them. I've already broken the ice with them. 
I already have a relationship with them, which is where you're going to win most people, the people that you already have a relationship. If every one of us would take personal responsibility to each one win one, you know what would happen to this church at the end of this year as we go into 2023? This church would explode with growth. If each one would do that. I hope that all of us will take the personal responsibility to do that this year. Another thing, be present and participate. I want to challenge everybody in here to do something this year. I love everybody here, but sometimes I think we get lulled into a, a, a spirit of lackadaisicalness, and I think that's happened. I want to challenge everybody in here to be present and participate when we gather together for a time of worship. Now, you're here this morning, and God bless you. We're going to meet again tonight at 5 o'clock. Let me ask you a question. Where are you going to be when we meet together, when God's family meets together for love and encouragement, singing songs of praise to God, and another study and actually discussion of his word? Where are you going to be tonight at 5? Some of you at one time used to be here regularly on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, and I love you, but some of you have gotten into a bad habit and you don't come anymore. And what about Bible class on Sunday morning? Once again, I love you, but some of you, have gotten into a bad habit of not making that a priority into your life. Maybe you would admit, you know, I've kind of gotten lackadaisical in my faith and in some of my habits. It doesn't have to keep going on, brothers and sisters. You can change it. And make this year, 2022, the year that you change that. I think these are things that we need to expect of one another. We need to expect that as a church to be present and to participate. And this third thing involves you. It's not something that we as a church can do for you. It's something that you as a church member have to do on your own at home. And it's this. Have a daily devotional time. This is critical to your spiritual growth. If you're not reading God's word and studying God's word and praying what God, about what God's word has revealed to you that day, if you're not doing this regularly on a daily basis, as David said in his devotional, he's right, I know what it's like not to have one, and I know what it's like to have one. There's not a day that goes by, not a single day. I'd never turn the television on in the morning or have any social media, none of that kind of stuff. That's not what I do in the morning. I start my day off, I read and meditate on God's Word and pray. I do that every day. And I promise you do that every day, and you'll grow spiritually. If you don't, you won't. It's as simple as that. We can't make you do that. We can encourage you to do that. That's not something the church as a whole, as a structure, can do for you. That's something that you're going to have to do for yourself and I just want to encourage everybody in here to make the church an essential part of your life because that's the way God designed it if it's not if it hasn't been if you would admit you know what I've gotten kind of lackadaisical I've gotten to where I miss the assembly of God's people regularly I used to come on Sunday night or Wednesday night and I don't anymore I'm letting other things uh, become a priority over that I don't have a daily Bible study time and prayer time I'm not actively trying to share my faith with other people if you would confess and admit those are things that I've gotten in a bad habit of doing commit to changing it this year in 2022 because, brothers and sisters, I don't want to be a part of the statistics of the overall trajectory of this country, the way things are going religiously. Do you? I want us to be different here at Landmark. And it can be, and it will be, but only when each and every one of us takes personal responsibility to do these things. And I just hope and pray that you'll do that. Let's close with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this new year, and I thank you for this church. I thank you for each and every individual who is here. I thank you for each and every married person. I thank you for each and every single person. I thank you for each and every teenager. I thank you for each and every uh, elementary age kid and every young child. And I ask your blessings on each and every one of them. Lord, I just pray that you'll help us all to refocus and recenter our lives on you in this year. Help us to make sure that you are the most essential part of our lives and that everything is built and structured around that. Lord, I've challenged us this morning from teaching that's in your word, and I just pray that we'll all take it to heart. Help us not to walk out of here unchanged. Maybe this morning there is someone who needs to come forward and say, you know, I, I have been neglectful, I've been lackadaisical in my spiritual life, and I just want the prayers of this church to help change. If that's the case, I pray that, pray that you will move and work in people's hearts. And even if people don't come forward 
I just pray that from their seat and where they are and the way they do things this year, I pray that things will be different. I pray that, the, that we will all recommit ourselves to you. Lord, I pray that you will put your hand of blessing on this church, that we will be the kind of church, the kind of people that you want us to be in this new year of 2022. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and the whole church said, Amen. Let's stand together while we sing this song of encouragement.